yeah, I'm curious if you don't mind explaining like the difference between like working tax versus tax that comes from businesses, real estate, passive, yeah, passive oh, okay. assets. Yeah, like talk about how like when you work, you know, 30% of it kind of gets taken by the government. Whereas if you choose to work for yourself or buy real estate, it can be a little bit less. Yeah, man. So, so this, this is actually a really good topic to talk about, mm -hmm. man. So, um, one of the things you'll hear is people love to get passive income. And the reason why passive income is so much more favorable than earned income or, or, or active income is passive income is actually taxed far less than your earned income. And the reason being, the main reason why this is true is because of Social Security and Medicare tax. It is mm -hmm. nicknamed the working man or working woman's tax, right? So essentially what it is, is that whenever you go out and you earn income, you work for a wage, W-2, a business, whatever the case may be, if you have earned income, you pay federal income tax, state income tax, if you live in a state with state income taxes, and then you pay this working man or working woman's tax, which is 15.3%. Now, that 15.3% is divvied up. Half is owed by the employer, half is owed by the employee. So mm -hmm. if you if you are a W-2 employee, you only pay 7.65%, but if you're self-employed, you pay the full 15.3%. That's something that's not actually talked about very often is that- mm, That's interesting. You know, yeah. You know, it, Technically, the self-employed do essentially have to foot more Social Security and Medicare taxes than people who uh, maybe get, go and get a W-2 job or something like that. Yeah. But now you start looking at passive income. So what? 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 what the uh, in in tax code in tax language, passive income really only refers to uh, like rental income or maybe a business in which you do not materially participate and you receive income from, but. Other forms of, I guess, passive income, in, 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 I, in, in the tax code, they may refer to it as like portfolio income or interest income, uh, so slightly different, but same, same, same theory, right? Dividends, interest, so if you, know, if you uh, have money in a high yield savings account and you're getting paid interest, that is also not subject to Social Security and Medicare tax. If you invest in dividend paying stocks and they pay you dividends, mm. those dividends are not subject to Social Security and Medicare tax. The rental income that you receive, if you own a rental property and they pay you rent, that rent is not subject to Social Security and Medicare tax, right? So I always like to tell people, you could take someone that makes $100,000 of rental income and then a hundred thousand. You could take someone else who makes a hundred thousand dollars of either W two or mm -hmm. uh, business income. The real estate investor will always pay less in taxes because they're not paying those Social Security and Medicare taxes. Mm, that's really awesome, and it kind of leads me into the question of like, how did you get started in real estate, and what do you recommend for someone young like me, and how to start in real estate? Yeah, man. So, man, that that that's a really good question. So. I'll be honest, I actually first got my fee wet in real estate just trying to diversify my portfolio. So I have a few different investments in, in like stocks, bonds, retirement accounts. I found a syndication and just invested my money just because I wanted to diversify. I didn't really do it because of the tax implications. In fact, it's sure. all considered passive income. I'm not really offsetting any, any of my income with W-2, I mean with, with depreciation or anything like that. And the reason being, is uh, most of my money that I use to invest actually gets invested back into my own business right now. Sure. Because that is actually what makes me the most money. Um, return on investment, ROI. You know, if yeah. you ever get into finances, that is a key, key, uh, you know, term that you should uh, be become very familiar with. Return on investment. Essentially, if I put a dollar into my business, I am more likely to turn that dollar into $20 than if I were to take that dollar and put it into real estate where I may get five or sure. if I put it in stocks and get five or six dollars or whatever the case. So um, essentially right now, if I could go back, I would actually take all that money, invest it back into my business into like different processes or something like that. But I do have investments in a syndication in real estate and I also have other investments uh, in like different stocks and bonds and, and, and things like that. High yield savings account, if you want to call that an investment. What's a syndication? 
syndication is like a partnership. So uh, mm-hmm. a syndication is just like a fancy way of saying, you know, there's multiple people pulling their money into a business and you all go in and like buy a building or something like that. Got it. Okay. And you got that syndication is for a building, like an apartment or? Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's for a commercial real estate. Okay. Got it. That's interesting. Hmm. And yeah, like I sometimes hear people, it's so hard to always know what to do when it comes to where to put your money and you bring up ROI and it's like some people say, why would you go into real estate when you could create a business online or create a software that like 20 X's or, you know, like real estate won't do that for you that quickly or it's always hard to know where to put your money, where to put your time. And yeah, I guess the question is like, how do you, well, where do you draw the line between like what you're passionate about and what brings in the most ROI? Like that's yeah. a, kind of a life question, I guess. Yeah, man. You know, it depends, you know, um, that, that, that's one of those things where you have to eventually make that decision of, of like, okay. Um, you know, cause even in business, uh, there is only so much you can essentially grow in, in a, in a given time period. Right. So if you just come up on a, a ton of cash, um, and, and, and you need to diversify, you're looking to deploy it, but you don't need to deploy it all on your main gig, you know, diversification that that's one of the, you know, most important things that an investor can learn to do is to diversify their money. And so if you get into real estate, that is great, but don't forget to, you know, you, you can invest your money into other businesses, right? You don't, mm. it doesn't even have to be a business that you yourself are running, right? You could find yeah. someone who owns a washateria uh man you know you know washaterias are like one of the most profitable businesses out there uh, like so a- are self storage units hmm. um there, there's some really profitable businesses out there but uh but yeah uh washaterias is that like car- a car wash okay car wash and then washateria is like clothes washing like laundromat kind of thing is yeah. what you're saying okay okay yeah S- simple businesses man um, yeah even gas stations. Gas stations are supposed to be, you know, relatively hmm. profitable, right? And they're all real estate focused. Man, you know, whenever you start really like looking into it, there's different levels of real estate investing. Even like there's single family uh, home investing. Mm-hmm. There's multi-family home investing. There's commercial real estate investing. Then you can get into things like mobile home parks. Then you know, then you have different aspects of like cost segregation analysis. Like so, okay. If I have a property by the water, I'll probably have a higher land value to building value. So my cost segregation won't go as far on a beach property that is that is oceanfront versus maybe uh, a property in the Smoky Mountains where land value is a lot smaller and the building may be a lot higher. So there's sure. all sorts of different you know ways that you can start slicing up real estate investing, and that's just real estate investing, right? Mm. Don't even get the financial advisors going on like stock investing. Yeah. And, uh, bonds and oh man, that stuff gets really, really detailed. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's it. I like that. And I'm curious, like, what's your perspective on bonds at the current moment? Like, I've heard of I bonds before. I've heard of investing in bonds, yeah. but with the yeah, go ahead. Man, you know, I'm 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 not a financial advisor, so you know, sure. take, take take my advice with a grain of salt. I think yeah. bonds have a a spot in everyone's portfolio just be just for diversification pur- purposes, right? Now, the younger you are, generally the smaller allocation of bonds you can have in your portfolio, and then the older you get, you know, you'll probably want to start stabilizing out everything and so you'll you know, want to have some fixed income in there with with, with bonds and stuff. Uh, but I I think they're a tool that that is like anything else, right? They're great for diversification. They're, I would not say that you will hit a home run with bonds, right? But they have their place in every investment. 